let's say we get to the point where we're able to reset reset everyone, anyone's entire epigenome. Let's say um, who, and, but there's only limited number of people who who that who can get that that service is not you know democratized. How does society decide who is worthy of getting a longer an exp- and we're ta- not talking about a, just a little bit of a longer life what if we get to the point where you know you know there's like two classes of humans there are those that are destined you know to kind of live to 80 100 and those that are going to live to a thousand you know what when we, we think about a thousand years from now when we have if we have these two classes of humans if it's not completely democratized um you know this just raises lots of ethical issues what i'm sure you've thought you've thought about this a bit and just wanting some of your thoughts on this yeah. Well, every day I think about this. There's yeah. no way I'm going to let that happen. No yeah. way. It's not going to be the future. I was talking to a movie producer yesterday about making a movie about that. Uh, it'll stay in, as science fiction if I have anything to say about it. Now, the, the treatments, often new technologies cost more. The Wright brothers flying in a plane used to be much more expensive than for the elite. Going in a rocket, of course, is, is you need a lot of money. But the idea is to bring the cost down. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. We're working now in my lab at to take what is currently a gene therapy to reverse aging, to make it into a pill that might cost a few cents a day. Uh, and you give that to somebody for a month, they go back five years, give it to another couple of months, they go back 10 years. And we actually now know that, at least in the mouse experiments, that, that that does reset the body. You don't need more treatment, and then you just age out again. And then eventually you'll just rinse and repeat and keep cycling back. And we don't know how many cycles you can do, but hopefully it's hundreds, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we also are excited that actually just today we got great data that showed that uh, any concerns about safety uh, were were, were uh, not uh, valid. And so we're pushing forward quickly um, and safely as best we can into treating humans in the next couple of years. We're going to be treating um, some animals just to make sure some extra safety. We have to do that. The government requires it, of course. What about the, the two classes? Um, So, you know, I want to bring the cost down to where everybody on the planet can afford it. There's a drug called metformin, which is given to type 2 diabetics, which only, I do take that, yes, uh, because there's a lot of evidence from looking at tens of thousands of diabetics who have taken this drug, that it's very, very safe, um, and that it seems to protect susceptible people from cancer, heart disease, frailty, and Alzheimer's disease. So for a few cents a day, that's for something that has almost no risk, hey, it's a no-brainer in my book, but a lot of physicians, most physicians are hesitant to prescribe a drug for type 2 diabetes to someone like me who doesn't yet have type 2 diabetes. I mean, that's another story, but I think that that's the wrong way to view medicine. But when it comes to the two societies, it could happen if the gene therapy is the only treatment that becomes available because the gene therapies are expensive. There's no denying that. But what's exciting to tell you about is that there are hundreds of labs who are now working on what we've just discovered, the ability to reverse aging by reprogramming the epigenome. Somebody is going to make a breakthrough and it's going to become very cheap to reprogram the body and hopefully very safe as well. So I'm not worried about the, that dystopian future. Um, it's very unlikely that it's going to stay expensive for long. I'm just trying to think through all the psychological implications as well. You know, a big part of people's meaning in life is their ability to struggle and uh, their ability to overcome struggle. Um, I, I see that there are on the horizon maybe some pills that will mimic fasting and the kind of benefits of that. Will there be pills someday that mimic exercise? Like, are we going to make really lazy humans that live a thousand but have no meaning in their lives anymore? Because we have a pill that lets you learn everything immediately. I'm sure you think about this too. Do We, we don't want to strip too much of, uh, of what it means to be human, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. We, we do need some adversity. And actually, right now, the best way to live a long time is to give your body some adversity. That's what exercise and being a bit hungry during the day is all about. But can we mimic that in a pill? Well, I believe we already are. Uh, I'm taking the NMN molecule, which in mice literally mimicked exercise. Those mice were right. running on a treadmill because they were physically fit without having exercised before. Um, I'm extremely fit on a treadmill and I don't do a lot of exercise. So, you know, at least based on an N of one experiment, which is not valid. Uh, and some friends of mine who do run marathons who have seen at least, uh, these anecdotal changes in their body and their time, running times, that this, we could already be there to have these exercise, uh, pills. 
So let's say we do have that. Um, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean it's an excuse to just sit on a couch and eat potato chips and watch movies because if you want the best bang for the buck, and we know this from the mouse, from the mouse experiments, if you run those mice that also get the pill or the, the, the water with the molecule, they run even further. Those were the ones that, that broke the machine. Uh, we, we had a treadmill that stopped running in our lab because they just kept running. And <laughs> the software wasn't written for mice to ever run more than three kilometers. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not an excuse. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind not having to exercise so much. It's, yeah. it, it, it is painful to do that. What I thought we were going to get to, Scott, was if you're going to live a long time, does that take the meaning out of life? It's to- totally against what I believe in. I do not think that the agency of life and the enjoyment of life has much to do with how many years you have. Just the mere knowledge that it's finite is sufficient. Let's use an example, and I'll turn the question over to you. If you could live 200 years, would you be sitting here enjoying this conversation anyway? No, I really, I, th- I think that if you waved a magic wand or you like, and you're like, Scott, I just reset your whole epigenome, I think I actually would be more motivated and excited to do as much as I possibly can in my life. Um, because that means that I would have double the potential capacity to make an impact on the world. It actually would affect my psychology. It would affect my psychology. I, I think about this all the time because I think a big part of sometimes I get sad and I, and, and not depression level, but I really do kind of feel unmotivated and sad some, some moments because there's such a bittersweet nature to the, to the briefness of it. And it's so hard for me to decide, you know, out of all the choices that I can make in a day, you know, it's, it can be overwhelming to be like, which choices do I make in this short, short life we're living that are going to have the biggest impact? It's too much stress. It would, it would alleviate that stress to a certain degree. Yeah. Well, you and I are, are not normal individuals. There, there are plenty of people who have extremely tough lives and have gone into careers uh, that are unfulfilling or, or difficult, even painful, brutal. So what I would, I've, I've said that there should be something called a skill radical where everybody gets paid to retrain for two or three years. And if life is that long, you can do that many times. And if you get into the wrong career or you're, you're born in, into poverty and couldn't get out the first 30, 40, 50 years, you have a chance at another life. And everybody should be given a chance to do what they love and find a purpose in life. 